Could Elizabeth Holmes get the same sentence as Sonny Balwani, even though she was only convicted of one third of the counts? Could she be penalized at sentencing on those acquitted patient counts? What's going to be the battle at sentencing? I'll give you a clue. It's over how they calculate the amount of loss. Why? Because the higher the amount of loss, the more prison time a defendant will get. So I'm going to walk you through those loss calculations. I'm going to talk to you about how they calculate loss and what the battle at sentencing is going to be all about and why Elizabeth Holmes may get the same sentence as Sonny Balwani. So hi there, I'm Michelle Hagan. I'm a legal analyst and an attorney. You may recognize me because I provided a lot of legal analysis on the Elizabeth Holmes case and on Sonny Balwani's trial as well, as well as many of these videos. So I wanna thank you, all of those of you who have subscribed. Please do support my work by subscribing. Hit that like button, share these videos, and please do leave a comment or question because these videos are simply my opinion, my analysis, and I wanna know what your analysis is as well. Okay, so let me do a quick background here in case you popped onto this channel. So Elizabeth Holmes was CEO of Theranos, a blood testing company that she started. Sonny Balwani was the COO. They were both charged with wire fraud and conspiracy counts, although they were tried separately. Sonny Balwani was convicted on all 12 counts. Elizabeth Holmes was convicted on four counts, one relating to conspiring to defraud investors with Balwani and three counts of defrauding individual investors. Now, I did plenty of videos on how to calculate the potential sentence that Elizabeth Holmes is looking at, so I refer you to take a look at those. But in this video, we're gonna talk about what the battle at sentencing is gonna be. And if you watched the prior video I just did on why Sonny Balwani is asking for a continuance, one of the reasons is a proper calculation of loss, okay? so. Let's talk about, and I'm also going to be answering that Halloween poll I did. And let me give you a little bit of a clue here. So can the acquitted counts, the patient counts, be counted towards Elizabeth Holmes' sentence? Can she be penalized for that? And in the poll, 60% of you said no. And I heard reasons why, or I was given reasons why, double jeopardy, and by the way, double jeopardy doesn't apply here. 60% of you said no, she can't be penalized on those acquitted patient counts. 33% of you said yes. Hats off, you're correct. She can be penalized on the acquitted patient counts. 7% of you, I tricked you here, 7% of you, when, it, when you were asked, it depends on the treats that she returned. The treats, okay? The treats could be, did she have settlements with some of these uh, victims, investors, and patients? Well, 7% of you thought that it depends was the correct answer. No, the correct answer was yes, she can be penalized on the acquitted counts those patient counts. So thank you to all of those of you who voted. So let's get into it. Who makes the call on whether, who calculates the loss? Now you could think that the loss calculation is only, a, only the amount. If you just told up, say for instance, let's do Sonny Balwani, who was convicted on all counts. So those six investor counts, if you total up all the money that was transferred to Theranos, all the money that was defrauded, you total that up, it's approximately 155 million. Whereas what Elizabeth Holmes was convicted of on those three investor counts, you total that monetary amount, and that comes up to approximately 144 million. So Holmes is looking at, at this point, and I'll get into the amount of loss in a second, how it's defined and calculated, if you just do that calculation, as I did in the prior videos on the calculating Elizabeth Holmes sentence, the 144 million is just adding up those investor counts. Sonny Balwani is 155 million. But when you look at the amount of prison time, that's a difference of over two years of prison time. 
for Elizabeth Holmes and Sonny Balwani. Balwani, because he was convicted on all those counts, the loss is $155 million, so it's more. So he's looking at over 24, over two, yeah, over two years of additional prison time. Okay, but that's not it. That's not the sum total of what calculation of loss is. And this is going to be the, the battle at sentencing for both Balwani and Holmes. Okay, so why is it that the judge can consider the acquitted counts? The patient counts and why if if the judge considers it that's where we can start to see where elizabeth holmes although she was only convicted of one third of the counts that balwani was she could be looking at the same sentence the same prison time that balwani gets okay so the reason is because the amount of loss is defined as all conduct all relevant conduct whether it's charged or uncharged counts, whether they were acquitted on these counts, whether, and here's another thing, on those three investor counts in the Holmes case where the jury was undecided, those investor counts could also be considered in the calculation of loss. The judge can consider all of that as well as any indirect conduct that was related to these wire fraud activities okay so it's a much bigger picture than just adding up the counts where she was convicted on okay so again the judge can consider it's at his discretion all relevant conduct so we're going to see that the government's going to argue all of it right the acquitted patient counts the undecided investor counts the counts that she was convicted on all right so um so that's where there's a possibility that Elizabeth Holmes could be facing the same sentence, even though she was only convicted on those four counts. Okay, so some of you asked, well, what about double jeopardy? And I know I mentioned it before, but double jeopardy doesn't apply because it's a much broader scope when you're looking at sentencing. And just to let you know, amount of loss is different than restitution. That's separate. The amount of loss... And I'll go to the charts right here and we'll take a quick look. And I went over these in my prior videos, but I think it'll be very helpful to you and to me to take a look at this calculation here. Okay, so this is right out of the federal sentencing guidelines, which, by the way, are advisory to a judge. They're not mandatory. It's up to the judge in this case at his discretion as to what the appropriate sentence is. Okay, so we start at what's the level here? It's a wire fraud count it's a fraud so we started base level seven and then we apply how much money now we're looking at economic monetary loss so emotional uh, distress or loss of reputation damages are not part of this calculation okay so we're going to go and look here and uh, excuse my penmanship here but i was just trying to illustrate so elizabeth holmes if you just take those three investor counts you add up the money that was she defrauded, that the jury found that she defrauded these investors of, that was approximately $144 million. So that puts her at level M. So that's adding 24 steps. So 7 plus 24 is 31. Okay, and I'm not talking about mitigating factors or aggregating factors. You can look at the videos I did on that. We're just looking at the amount of loss calculation here, okay? Because the amount of loss determines how much prison time, what the prison range is that could apply to her sentence. Okay, but because I just told you the amount of loss could include all relevant conduct, she could be looking at those acquitted charges, the undecided charges. You add up that monetary, and that's $155 million approximately, which is the same that Balwani is looking at. So it drops to a, adding to a le, uh, 26, so two additional steps. So that takes her to a level 33, okay? Now let's go to the next chart. This is the prison range, okay? So it would be seven, if you look at just the fraud counts without considering the money involved, that's zero to six months, okay? But that doesn't apply here. 
we have to go ahead and apply. So she's either looking at 31, if the judge considers all relevant conduct, the patient counts, the investor counts that were undecided on. She's looking at 108 months to 135, so that's nine years on up. But if the judge considers the acqu acquitted counts, all of the relevant conduct, she's looking at, and so is Balwani, 135 months to 168 months, so that's 14 years. So that's a difference of five years, according to this calculation, if I did my math right. So it's going to be interesting at sentencing, and it's going to come down to the proper calculation of loss. Okay. So the amount of loss can, there's two ways the judge can look at uh, or evaluate the amount of loss. There can be actual loss where you just calculate the amount of money that was defrauded from the investors, or there's intended, intended loss. And the judge is to choose the greater of those two. Okay. So the government's going to argue intended loss to include any losses that the other patients may have suffered, monetary losses, uh, the loss, the monetary losses where Elizabeth Holmes was not, where the jury was undecided on those three investor counts. So it's a much bigger amount, right, of money. It's beyond the 144 million or the 155 million, okay, depending if the judge applies the intended loss, which I'm sure is what the government's going to argue. And I'm sure the defense is going to argue, no, no, judge, it's just the actual loss, right? Because Elizabeth Holmes didn't intend to harm anyone. And they're probably going to argue, here's a couple, you know, let's talk about strategy here. They're probably going to argue that loss wasn't foreseeable, that there would be losses to patients, or there would be losses to these three investors. Holmes might argue that, you know, Balwani was in charge of the lab. She wasn't aware that there were problems at the lab. Maybe that's what they're going to argue or that there was no causal link. That's the other argument they can make that a Balwani's conduct was the true cause. You know, he put together the financials, which led the investors to believe or to invest in Theranos, right? Balwani was in charge of the lab. Balwani was in charge of the financials. See, pointing the finger at Balwani, okay? That's possibly what the defense could do. The defense could also argue that the calculation is too speculative. We don't have it down to the penny, judge. We don't know exactly how much each one of these investors lost or the patients lost. Ah, but that's not the test. The test is the judge has to, has to make a reasonable estimate of the loss doesn't have to make a calculation down the down to the penny. It's just a reasonable estimate of the loss. Okay. Now here's what happens on appeal. Now this calculation that the judge makes, if the judge does not make a specific finding or explain how he calculated uh, the amount of loss or the sentence, or if the judge applies a wrong calculation, appellate courts will toss out, will reverse convictions. So judges have to be very careful here. And that's where the probation department also comes in because the probation department puts together the pre-sentence report. They contact the investors, they do the calculation, right? And then there's a period of time at which Holmes and Balwani can object to the recommendation in the pre-sentence report from probation. But then they work it out or they attempt to work it out with the probation department to say, hey, the calculation is wrong because of this, or we have an expert who has made this analysis who says this, or there wasn't really any patient uh, monetary losses or those investors. It wasn't foreseeable that seasoned investors would not do their own due diligence. Maybe that's something they may argue. Okay, but seven days before the sentencing date, probation submits their final pre-sentence report to the judge. They have met with the parties, they've met with the defense, they've met with the victims, they have made their recommendation to the judge, and any additional items that aren't worked out, 
that's where the judge will make a determination at the hearing. Okay. So seven days before Elizabeth Holmes is sentencing, her date of sentencing at this point is scheduled for November 18th. So the final pre-sentence report, if I did my math right, should be November 11th. For Balwani, if he doesn't get his sentence continued, uh, it's currently set for November 15th. So his final pre-sentence report should be November 8th. So we'll see what happens there. So, um, you know, the, I'm sure the government's going to really argue for a much broader view of sentencing and Elizabeth Holmes does face, even though she was only convicted of one third of those counts that Balwani was convicted of, there's certainly an argument that could be made that she, she could get the same sentence because of the amount of loss calculation because the judge can consider all of the acquitted counts. The judge can consider the amount of loss on the investors where the jury was undecided on those counts, right? That additional 11 million, approximately $11 million, which could take her from nine years to 14 years. And again, this is before you apply any mitigating factors. Does she qualify for as a loss of a caretaker? Did she assist the government I'm not aware that they've made any motion by the government to say that she assisted, therefore she should be given credit for that, have a reduction in her sentence and other factors. And you can go ahead and take a look at my videos that I've done on how you calculate, or it's actually four ways to reduce her sentence and three ways to increase it. So you can take a look at the aggravating mitigating factors. So we'll see what the strategy is of the defense and the government. And how they calculate, you know, who argues for actual loss, who argues a much greater possibility for intended loss to rope in all those additional charges. We'll see what happens. So that, in my opinion, is what's going to be the battle at sentencing. So let me know, what do you think? Do you think she is looking at a sentence similar to Balwani's? Do you think that the government's going to argue? I mean, what do you think the government and the defense is going to argue here? So please do leave a comment or a question. I want to know what your analysis is. And please do hit that like button and please subscribe. Please support my work by subscribing. And thanks again to all of those of you who have subscribed to my channel. I appreciate all the continued support, your wonderful questions, and a welcome, big welcome to all of those of you who did subscribe who recently subscribed and thank you again to all of those who voted in our halloween poll our trick-or-treat poll i appreciate all your guesses and um so that's it that's a wrap so thanks again for watching and please do subscribe